And I'm Marissa uh, Henderson, and I'm a member at large as well. And I'll be your first presenter. So and we also have um, some other um, um, Kristen Chenery is here. Um, and Kristen Chenery is here. And um, Mark, Billy, Tammy's wonderful. And Michelle. Yeah, so she's referencing our folks from our AEP, AFP office. Michelle, do you want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> Tammy, hi. hi. Uh, and Mark, I know Mark had a few brief announcements that he wanted to make as right well. Now. Sure, why not? Hi, everybody. Um, next Wednesday, uh, the union is doing an economic justice town hall. Um, it's basically to take the uh, administrative salary guide newsletter that we got last uh, uh, break and sort of pull it apart and talk about what does it mean. Uh, we're just going to just try to take one point, which is we have 106 new administrators in the last two years here at Wayne State. For 15.6 million, what could have your department used for that to help with the students, to help with staff, to help with tenure line? So, going there to share those stories and kind of come up with an action plan. So, I'm looking for um, anybody that would be interested in um, facilitating one of the tables. We've got a bunch of facilitators, but we don't have all of them yet. Um, or scribes for each table. So, afterwards, come up and talk to me if, they're, if you're interested in helping with that. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mark. Just real quick, who already has ESS in the room? Great, get your hands up nice and high so everybody can see who you are. Go to the folks. Hey, there you go. Hey! Who are the folks that you want to go to um, to help you through this process because it is a process? And who has promotion? A few folks around the table. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So please introduce yourself to your neighbors and let them know. Um, it really does a uh, great collaborative effect that we have here on our um, ASS team. So I will turn it over uh, to Ms. Marissa for employment security status. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Marissa. I'm an academic advisor in mathematics, and I've been at the university for five years, and my I was granted ESS in October. Okay? Yay. Um, so I do want to make sure to thank you. Take in what my experience was, and then hopefully um, it'll help you in your own. Um, what is ESS? So, employment and security status is the book version. Is the contractual status of continuous employment with the university available to academic staff on an ESS track position? When the employee achieves ESS, the terminal date of the academic staff member's appointment is eliminated. Okay, that's in your contract. Okay, Article 21. Um, but what's the lamest term? It's job security. Okay? <laughs> you keep your job. It's not, it is not a pay increase. You just keep your position. Okay. An ESS track employee works under a probationary period in which they gain experience and contribute to the university. Okay. During that time, the employee shows that they're an essential and valued member of their college, school, division, whatnot. Okay. It's basically extended job interview. You're really proving that you are worth keeping. Um, but the ESS is branded strictly with your college, school, division, not necessarily the whole provost university. Once you do obtain ESS, you no longer have an end date to your position. Okay? So no more contract renewals, that sort of thing. Um, and you can only really be terminated under extreme circumstances. Funding for your position, breaking the law, etc. And if you do not obtain ESS, that means your contract is not renewed after your fifth year ends. Okay. However, you can appeal this decision. Okay. So who is ESS for? It's for academic staff that have an ESS track position and have four years of full-time service invested. Okay. This is your ESS clock. And after this time, the employee can be considered for ESS. Um, it is stated in your contract if you are ESS position, okay, there's a lot of variety and, um, and differences, but it is stated once you sign that you are in an ESS position, okay, but things that could stop the clock, so change in funding of your position, are you subsidy or general, hard or soft money, you hear those terms toss, tossed around a lot, um, extended leaves, that sort of thing will stop your clock. When do you start? Okay. It's recommended to apply for ESS at least five months before the anniversary of the fifth year on the job. So my anniversary was October, 
I needed to have everything submitted five months before then. Okay? If your start date is different, that means your five months would be different. Um, and it's based on your particular start date, not a uh, timeline of the university. However, um, notification of intent to your supervisor, college division, etc., um, might be earlier than that. ESS packet. This is your proof of your job excellence throughout your time at the university. Okay? Everything that you've done, now you give them proof to, to people who are looking at you. Okay? This includes documentation of all your efforts in those four years. Okay, so ESS, what you want to be granted, is based off of, first and foremost, your excellence in job performance. Okay? How effective are you at what you do? Okay. Then secondly, your professional achievement. Okay? Have you been improving in your profession? Have you been attending conferences? Have you been learning new things? Um, you have to grow from the first time you enter the university. Okay. Consider is also, consideration is also given, but it's not required, I'm putting it in quotes, not required. Um, scholarly achievements, so publishing and um, articles and stuff like that. Um, and service, so that's activities outside your normal job duties. Um, like volunteering at the late night breakfast, committee work, that sort of thing. Um, it says it's not uh, required, you should still do it anyway, 100%. Okay? What is in a packet, so the thing that you are giving so they can judge. Um, First is the cover sheet. That is in the packet that you received today. Um, your employee personal request statement. This is your personal justification on why you should keep your job. Okay. This is from you to describe what you do on, from these past four years and why you should keep your position. Um, your professional record, which should be constantly approved upon every year. Um, recommendation from your chair director. So these are your supervisors advocating for you to receive ESS. Your evaluation. So every year there was an annual review workshop last year. Um, those are your progression through the years where you were graded on these um, job performance and service all the way through. Um, your le letters evaluation from individuals familiar with your work. These are guys that you have you know, work really closely with the university, have them recommend, say something really nice that can speak upon your ability, okay? Not the coffee guy that says, you, know, you always tip me $2, right? <laughs> Someone, an advisor that you work with. Um, and evaluations outside the university are not really recommended. Um, evidence of excellence in job performance. Uh, perf Professional achievement, service, scholarly achievement. So those are examples of your work. So, my God, when I have completed mine, I put the stats of my pass rate of, because I am in charge of a particular program. So I put the stat, the pass rate of my guys versus those who do not take um, our class, our program, to really show that, yeah, I'm really contributing to our, uh, our success. Um, so things that scraps of... Uh, if I'm presenting, put that in. Put the uh, slide that you presented so they can see. Or seminars that you have been a part of. All that should be included in there. Um, you also put the copy of the ESS promotion factors. And this is unit, college, <coughs> division, et cetera, specific. Okay. So class has specific factors. Um, library has specific factors. And that is what you are going to be evaluated against. So after you complete your packet, okay, and it goes to your college, where it's taken through the ESS and promotion committee of your peers. Um, and they're going to be rating your packet against the factors um, that the, it's already pre-established. And then the committee members either recommend you for ESS or they don't, and then send this recommendation to the dean. Okay, so after you hand in your packet, your part is done. It goes through all the proper channels and the evaluations, um, and you should hear a response, good or bad, at least three months before the fifth year of your anniversary. After which, you know, if something bad, God forbid something bad happens, then you can do other avenues, which will be in time of your end of your fifth year. Help. Your best life lifeline is someone who's already went through all these processes. I am in a, uh, in, I was, I'm in a center that I was 
the only one and first one to ever stick around long enough to achieve ESS. <laughs> so I had to make sure I attended events like this and um, really branch out and talk to other advisors to get pointers and, uh, and everything else like that. Um, start early. I, I, as soon as I hit fourth year, I was already sweaty. So I started talking. Um, making sure that I knew what to put, and I've had I have 15 drafts of my ESS packet because I had to kill. I wanted to make sure I killed my personal statement, um, and it was good for me. So I'm not saying that's like four years, but uh, you should start thinking about it at least when you get the fourth year. Um, all the necessary forms and and everything else is found on the provost website, provost.wang.edu, um, and then you can see that form that I've given you and any other factors that may be. Um, so what to put in a packet, kind of my recommendations, so personal presentations and conferences that you attend, just stick an agenda or something in there um, so that they know that you attended, anything with your name on it as a presenter or such, let them know that you were there doing it. Um, nice notes that student or colleagues, you know, uh, my worked with a lot of advisors outside, and they'll send me a thank you note. I photocopied it and put it in. Um, I made sure that they knew that I am helping not only in my department, but in others as well. Um, stats, like I said before, I ran stats constantly on how, I, how my guys did versus ones who don't take our program. And uh, committee projects and results, like, like we have a math department has a lot of in-house committees, um, what do you work on in there? You know, is there anything massive change that you've been a part of? Any questions for me? Yes, ma'am. I find the website, uh, the provost acts buggy sometimes, so refreshes your friend. Um, so uh, if like a, a form you pull up and then you can't go back, refresh, but everything listed on there is what you will need to submit. Any other questions? Thank you, everyone. from last year. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Shauna Reavers. I actually work with Moira in the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. I am going to be talking about applying for a promotion. So I recently received my promotion last year. Yes, last year. <laughs> so um, I'll kind of go through things and answer any questions if you have any. Promotion is different from ESS because Getting promotion depends on some differing factors, basically, as far as what you need to have in order to get it. Um, but always be current. As Marissa mentioned, your professional record, keep it updated so that you don't have to try to remember back however long you have to, to go back in order to get your promotion. Sometimes I've heard three, I've heard four. Depends on your mentor when it's time for you to do it. I'll say that. Um, to your activities and things you've been doing, any certifications, like if you went through ATA training, ATA, yes, ATA, which is uh, Advisor Training Academy. So if you go through that and you get your level one certification, you know, noting these things in your professional record, um, you want to include, as she checked here, job description, conferences, seminars, and service items or any service work that you've been doing. Marissa mentioned committees, either in your department, outside your department, being university level. Uh, contracts, keep a handy list. Reference letters and recommendations, these things are kind of on the, on the separate end, but you still want to have that information. Your, yes? Just go back. External evaluators. It should be additional. I, I think the next slide corrects it. Okay. Yes? Um, there is a cover sheet, a copy of it was in your handouts, it's also on the Provost website. It is also used 
for faculty. So there are some items on the cover sheet that will not apply to you. I think Moira took them off when she made the handout. But um, just so you know, they use the same cover sheet for faculty, prom not promotion, faculty uh, tenure. tenure. Yeah, yeah, promotion and tenure. Okay. Um, notice what items you don't see on there. Like if there's something you want to add, you can add it on there. Not too many things, but say you have some um, thank yous, like Marissa was mentioning before, from people in other departments, in your departments, from students. You can add those in, like a short, not too long, not too many, because you don't want this packet to get as big as your ESS packet. It's, it's, not, it's not that extensive, I should say. Um, your professional record, again, it's always going to be there. Um, the template for that, I believe, is also on the Provost website. Or Yeah, it's also on the Provost website. Your personal statement is optional, but it is a time where you can talk about the things you've done, how you've added success service both to the university, to your department specifically, and it's a way for you to express yourself. So if you, I would suggest doing it. I did one for my promotion packet. So even though it says optional, not really. Um, your summary is the names, contact numbers, and departments or emails for your additional evaluators. These are people who are going to basically recommend you for the promotion. Same with ESS, you know, they're recommending that you get ESS. Um, but the summary, like I said, is just that. Their names, their contact information, how you know them, and what capacity you know them, I should say. And there's actually a form that Lib Science, I'm sorry, Library, yeah, Library of Science. Well, information, they're, they're new now. They have a new name now. But they had a website, and they had a, a quick little form that I used to fill in my evaluators, and I gave it to my supervisor, which is the assistant dean in my college. So she took that, and she contacted them saying, you know, Shauna going up for promotion and requested this. I had actually talked to them first and told them that I wanted them to be my additional evaluators. So they knew that that communication was coming from my supervisor. Sample letters sent to additional evaluators. Whoever sends out the letter saying Shauna is going up for promotion, I didn't actually format that letter. My boss format, formatted that letter, but she included it as a part of my packet for promotion so that they knew what was being asked of the additional evaluators. I have a question. Yes. So does the sample letter uh, come from you or does it come if from If you format it, you can give it to your boss. Well, if your boss, if your boss formats the letter uh -huh. and they send it out, yes. does, that, does he include it? In yes. It? Okay. Because ultimately, the way it worked in my department when it came to gathering up all the forms, mm -hmm. my boss gathered up all the forms. Okay. And she put them all together based off of the list that I need, you know, the, the documents that I needed, mm -hmm. and then she sent it to the dean's office. Okay. So she sent it up the chain. There's a template um, for the letter, too. That's on the Provost website? website? On the okay. Website. Okay. So you can change it and adjust the template. Yep, to, to fit your needs. Yep. Um, there's a section called miscellaneous information. You could also put your, your thank yous or your gratitude that you've received in this section instead of adding it as additional, uh, as additional documents. But that's a, a place you could also put those. Like I said, not a whole lot, but just a, a nice representative group of the, oh, you are so wonderful. Thank you so much for that time you helped me. Looks beautiful when you're going for a promotion, so use those. Um, a copy of your factors. I wanted to make a little blur, uh, say a little blurb about factors. Factors will depend on your department or your unit, okay? Some, it, it came to my attention last year or the year before last, that some areas don't have their factors set out and ready to go. So you might have to be the one to get that together if you can't seem to locate where your factors are. Factor, yes? Say what? Go ahead and finish your sentence. Oh. Um, they do have to you know, follow certain guidelines, but it gets more specific to what you do at your job, or your unit does at your job, um, 
So you have to kind of, I know the word I'm thinking of, tailor them to fit. Yes. So factors though, if you don't have factors, and many places don't have factors, the university factors are there. Mm -hmm. That goes in your packet. If you don't have factors in your department or college or division, wherever you're located, the university ones go in, and you can utilize your, your job description from some of what you put in your in your professional record. You may want to initiate factors, but if, you, if you're going up for promotion or ESS and you don't have factors now, anything that you start to write up won't be in place for a year. So it may be a conversation to have with your colleagues. If you have three or more members with ESS, that's the minimum to start generating factors. If you're just there by yourself, as we've seen, happens a lot, or your place doesn't have it, start the conversation, but know for the cycle that you're in, if you just discover at that point, the university factors, which are also on the on the, on the Provost Provost website. page, so you can just include that in your packet. It's the same stuff we use for selective salary, for ESS, it's the same factors all three places. And then utilize your, if you're an individual, you can, you can refer to your job description, so for what are you supposed to do. Use that mm -hmm. in place of department-specific factors. Publications, if applicable. <coughs> I know ATA offers uh, opportunities to publish. Um, there might be other through um, national, I forgot what they're called now. Thank you. National organizations was the word, <laughs> like Nakata. Um, there might be an opp opportunity to publish. Um, and Moira likes to, to stick up with factors, factors, factors. She was actually the one when, when she knew we had enough members with ESS to get a signed document that is our factors for our unit. So. She's well versed in that. <laughs> I'm not sure about the handout. Oh, the, the, the timeline on the back of one of the pages. Notify your supervisor of its intent to apply. There is no nudge memo for this. You can be asked, but take the initiative if not. So what she means by that is your boss isn't going to say, hey, you ready to do promotion? That's what she means by nudge. You might have to be the one to keep up with it and say, okay, I have everything I think I need for promotion. I've been here. I have my, say, from one to two, which was me. Um, it was my master's degree and some growth in my career, basically. Um, so I said, I have it now. It's time for me to, to go up and see if I can get this promotion now. So I went ahead and let my boss know. I'm looking to go up for promotion. I'm going to send you a memo that states that that's my intent for this coming year because I'll have everything that I need in order to get that. So that's what she means. Yes? Did you mention um, when you can go? I, I, I might have missed that. When can you go for promotion? I didn't give a timeline. No, when can you go for promotion? I'm saying, to me, that's a timeline. That, that That's a date for when you can do it. I didn't give that. What I said was, if you meet the requirements for the next level promotion in your job description. That's how I left it earlier. Okay. So yeah, that's what I mean. Three. So I didn't say, no, I didn't say three or okay. any type of number. Because to my knowledge, there isn't a number. It's no, a minimum it of three years. Three years. There's a minimum Okay. Minimum you can make three exceptions in extraordinary services. So a minimum of three years before you can go up for a promotion. And, and then, because I... I have been here long enough where that didn't even factor into what I was doing, yes. It's often a question, too, of how that three years is interpreted because a lot of places like the libraries where they have a really early starting port period, three years is your being in rank by the time the promotion is going to place. So we've had, it's been a constant, over the years it's a, it's a conversation, people get confused, they get told, well, you have to wait. So the time that your promotion takes, takes is effective which will be the, the August when the school year starts. So if you come through the February cycle this February that's coming up and you are promoted, your promotion takes place in August. So the interpretation that the union and the provost office agree upon is that as long as you have that three years, by August, you're good. Now, you gotta have enough substance to be comfortable with the promotion, but nobody can point to the clock and tell you, oh, in May, you won't have three years in, so you can't go up next February. Again, it's if you have a question about it, check with somebody, but don't be don't be pushed off. I mean, it's, it's gotten corrected in most places now, but with new folks, they see that three years and they start to wonder when does that apply? What window is that for? It's as long as you your start date is three years from the August that you'll be promoted to your unit. 
long as you've accumulated three years by that time, you can be reviewed during that three year period. But it's the issue at that point. And again, there are exceptions to that. Don't happen much, but it is contractual. Is it every three years? You could yeah, be eligible? Oh, yeah, minimum every three years. So okay. you can go from yeah. to three yeah. four. So you're eligible every three years. Okay. Years. Okay. I just wanted to make sure because I was like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's supposed to be summary. List of evaluators. By the summer, you should have your list. Oh, by the summer. That's the timeline. I'm like, what? Um, yes, you should be working on this for the summer. I mean, over the summer, you should have these things. Um, personal statement should be done. Final dossier is sent to the unit dean. So for that would be my boss because that, that's the dean of my unit. Um, in my example, basically, I was going on with my example. I think I got hers. And then she sent it up in December to the dean. It could have been sooner, but I think there was some back and forth about some documents. But um, by December, she had it up to the unit, I mean, to the, to the dean of the college. And then they sent it over to the provost's office. So they had to get it there by February. The University Promotion Committee meets, I don't, I don't, in 2005, that's when they met, but the date varies. I don't know, when did they meet? It's about, that's close. It's about yeah. the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, like, it's out near the end of the back, because the faculty is a lot longer, so we just yeah. kind of work with them. Yes. Yeah. The the Nine academic staff members with ESS, and, um, Yeah, plus a few other things. So if you have, they're on the committee, right? Yeah, they're on the committee. Um, they review the packets online in advance. So that's how the process goes and the steps that are taken there. They are your peers. Mm. They are your peers, those nine up there. But they might do different things in their, they, they might have different duties that they perform every day. So if they're not quite doing what you're doing, you want to let them know through your professional statement, your job duties, your professional record, what you do do. So you let them know that. So that as they're reviewing your packet, they have an idea of what they're evaluating you on, basically. Um, you're notified by April. I can't remember when I was notified. <laughs> um, so you, you, you have an answer by April of what it's going to look like for next fall, which is the August he was talking about. <coughs> I'm sorry, Ricardo was talking about. <laughs> um, I'm going to skip this one, but the committee doesn't always agree on candidates is kind of what she's saying there in that first one. There's also discussion about applicants and their positives and negatives and things like that. Um, if there was disagreement, they take they would usually go back to the factors for that person, so that's why your factors are important. Um, I don't... Have you been on the committee before? Yeah, yeah I was on the Santa Cruz Cardinals on the committee. Cheryl, yeah. Years, 10 of the last 13 years. Yeah. Um, so the... Just quick, the yeah. university committee, as Shauna said, doesn't have necessarily folks from your area. They split the committee selected through the policy committee of the Senate and the provost office taking the slate together. Those are those things that you get sent around where you, your administrators ask for volunteers for PNT committee, for sub, um, different Article 30 committees in the fall, or ASPDC, though, that same process. There has to be a librarian and an archivist, that's the plus stuff. But so it's important. Um, as Shauna said, optional really shouldn't be read as optional for personal statement because that's the only way that a lot of us get to see who you are and what you do behind your professional record. So that's where you tell somebody who may not work right with you at the university level what you do and why it's valuable and where you contribute. Um, and it's a good process. Um, this would be, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's. Shana, can I just yes, absolutely. Um, Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Cheryl White of Educational Outreach and I've served on the University Promotion Committee for two years. One thing that I cannot emphasize, and Marissa touched upon it even for ESS, but for promotion, quantitative data 
is important. Just don't make a general statement while well, I advise students, say, in computer science. Put information as a, on an annual basis or a semester basis. I advise an average of 100 students. Uh, the more detailed you can be, and that's why it's, uh, I don't know when they said that that personal statement was optional, because it really should be in there. Yeah. Because that highlights and where you can really kind of explain some of the things that you do. Did everybody hear her in the back? Okay, good. Any questions? It also has to be electronic. Yes, it's yeah, it's all PDF. I'm, like, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, it is. It is all electronic. Um, my entire packet was PDFs. So even the cover sheet was, was converted to a PDF, which is print to PDF now. It's so easy. It's awesome. Um, I didn't actually have to do it. My, my boss ended up doing it, and the, the, the support staff up in the dean's office did it. So... But if you need to, it's all electronic. So if the, as many of them that you can get to be PDFs when you send them to the next level up, which will be your uh, unit dean, the better. So, you know, or your boss, if it's your boss who's, who's sending the packet up to the, to the uh, college level. Any questions for me? Yes. Not a question, just a thing to let people know in the College of the Arts and Sciences. Mm -hmm. Our dean's office isn't going to be assisting you in any of this. It's going to be really you and your department chair, your department administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. you know, most departments have an administrative assistant that would help with this kind of thing. It deals with personnel issues, that kind of thing. So your dean's office may not be as kind as pharmacy <laughs> to reach down and help you with that. because. Well, we, we're off campus, kind of, so, you know, we need... I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But yes, that's good to know for your different colleges who would be the one to, to, to put your packet together for you to help you out, make sure it's all electronic, and get it to the next level after your dean's uh, recommendation. Uh, not recommendation. Yeah, recommendation. Yeah, on your promotion. So, you know, that is part of the product. Okay, so here's the provost website since we're talking about it. I think she said academic staff, right? There should be documents somewhere. I know, they keep oh, moving yeah, it around. Very top. Very top. Very top. So, yeah. Okay. Under looking for. Oh, looking for. Let me go. What back. do you get from the left to the right? did you say looking for? Oh, there it is. Academic personnel. Top. Academic personnel. Okay. So there's a lot of information here. But what we're talking about today, you can see under templates and instructions. And there's also some procedures there. I think that's a um, that's PDF document, isn't it? Yeah, that's the promotion and tenure stuff. It should have ESS there, too. Oh, here are the documents. There we go. It's ESS there. Yeah, it's in there. So there's a packet of documents there that you can take a look at. It's really tiny. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can make it bigger. There we go. So you can see what's there. Um, but it's, yes. Yeah, I was going to thank you. Go ahead. Um, I was just going to say, besides going to your um, administrator, <clears throat> you can always call the union office. And we can often help <clears throat> connect you with somebody in your college or someone who has some experience who could help you um, on this. So <clears throat> that's always a resource outside of this meeting. Mm -hmm. Also, the union website has an ASSC page, which contains a lot of information, plus it has a lot of the, you know, the provost has, plus more of uh, uh, things that were developed, um, and all, as well as past uh, workshops on ESS. I think more is, might even be on there. Um, and finally, uh, when we talk about doing service for the university, union service counts. So, um, later in the year, we're going to be looking for people to run for the ASSC and to hold an office for that. That would be considered service to the university as well. Um, so, uh, and, like, so, if you have any other questions, if you, you know, outside of this meeting, think of something later, feel free to call the That's union office. There it is. Yeah. 1750. I was trying to get to the website. I thought this one. It says that's events.wayne.edu. Why the union website? It's aeapaft.org. Oh, uh, okay. I thought they had an attachment with the Wayne website. Uh, I think on the links, they used to have quick links. Oh, okay. I don't know if they still have the quick links. 
Oh, it's up here. Yeah, you have to go to regular out. We don't we don't go on the university server. We don't use emails connected to the university server. Okay. So it's completely different. And then there's an ASSC page, a second one down under about us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, under about us. Yes. Yeah. There you go. And then scroll it up. Yeah. Then you can see there's a bunch of links and things. No, I meant. Um, I can make it bigger, right? Yes. Control and Zoom in. Oh. Yeah, so you see there's the documents mm -hmm. for ASS, mm -hmm. ESS and stuff. Oh. So another resource. There we are. Yay. So join us next month. We meet every month. Um, our events are, you know, you can find on the website. They're also already listed on Academica. So where you went to sign up for this list, uh, for this workshop, you'll see all the other workshops listed. Um, next month, if uh, Cynthia wants to put a plug in for uh, our topic next month. Uh, yes. Uh, we're going, we hope, we're hopeful that we're going to have a session on human resources. Human resources are um, so we hope that uh, we have a guest from Human Resources talk about human resources and what they do and the structure of it because I know that that can be kind of a confusing thing for many, if not all of us, especially since some of these kind of restructured that. So hopefully we'll be doing Michelle is helping me, so kudos for that. Um, Thank you. So yeah. Well, hopefully see you next month, and thank you for coming. Sarah, what? Sarah, I don't care. Don't forget your name. Close it. The 26th, was it? Yeah. <laughs>